Okay, hello everybody. Um, this is um, a typical circuit for uh, to apply Kirchhoff's uh, loop rules. As you can see, this circuit has several uh, electromotive force or batteries and also several uh, resistors uh, divided between sub-circuits of this major circuit that we have here. There's a procedure how to do a problem like this and uh, it is best actually to identify some uh, some some stuff before you start solving a problem and so on. So basically you, you need to identify all the currents that go through this uh, circuit. First of all, maybe it's not a bad idea to hint a point here. I'm going to call this point A. Since we have two uh, closed circuits, I'm going to call this one I and I'm going to call this one II. Okay? And as you can see, this um, electromotive force or battery is going to push the current this way, basically. So I'm going to predict that it's going to push the current this way. Even if you've got the, the current pushed in a different direction that it was, it's not a big deal. You can figure out at the end of, you can figure out how the current direction is in each uh, circuit at the end of the um, solution. If you find the current negative, then the current direction is actually opposite to this direction, which probably the current that you, you predicted to be this way is actually going this way. Um, that's it. You don't have to change anything. But uh, we're not going to go there now We don't because we don't know. So this is circuit number one. So I'm going to also put for myself a way to track how to go on this circuit. So I'm going to go this way. I like to go always clockwise. So I'm going to go also here this way. <coughs> Okay, since I assume the current is going this way, I'm going to call this maybe current I1, and this current is going to go from here to here. Since, since the current is going from this side to this side, this means that the current here is going from the higher potential to the lower potential. And now the current comes to a junction. So the current is still going this way, and this is I1 still, because I called it I1. Now it comes to a junction. Look, this this battery is going to push the current up here if it has enough strength to overcome this battery. But this battery is, you know, is 15 volts compared to this one. So I'm going to predict the current that is going from this circuit to be like this. If my prediction is wrong, it's not a big deal again. And I think I'm going to call this current I2. Okay, so this current I2 is going this way. And this is also I2. Now, once the current comes to the junction here, this is I2 always. And this is I1. Probably these I1 and I2 are going to meet here, and they are going to form a third current. I'm going to call it I3. Okay, so I'm going to call this I2. And this is I3, as you can see here now, and so on. So this current goes through this resistor from the higher potential to the lower potential. Since this is the higher potential, I'm going to make it positive, lower potential negative, and so on. Now look at this current. This current is going this way, so since it's going through this resistor this way, so this must be the higher potential one, and this is lower potential one, and so on. Um, let's just actually make sure that this is I3, so that we don't make any mistake. What is this one here? It is actually I1. Look, there it is, okay? <clears throat> All right, so now let's write down the equations that we know so far. The first equation that I like to pinpoint is the junction equation, which is I1 meets with I2 gives I3. So basically here, I'm going to say I1 plus I2 equals I3. I'm going to call this equation number one. Okay. All right. So now, as I said, I pinpoint this point at the beginning of the problem. And I'm going to start my way going up like this to find the potential drops. This, you know, in this, in this uh, step of the problem, I want to apply uh, Kirchhoff's rule. So I'm going to start here, and I'm going to go here. Now, what's this voltage? It's, I'm going from the minus side to the positive side of the battery. So the first one here is what? Plus 10. Keep going, follow this, kind of like rotation clockwise. Keep going, keep going, okay. Look, here's another potential or voltage change. Now, is this voltage change positive or negative? Look, you are here at this point, and you go here from the positive to the negative. Since you go from the positive to the negative, 
this must be a potential drop because you have a high potential here and a lower potential here. So this must be a potential drop and we say minus. It's a potential drop that is equal according to Ohm's law, V equals IR. So this should be I1 times 5. Okay. Now let me continue here all the way down. I'm going to stay on the my loop. I'm going now at, at this section of the circuit where we have I3. We don't have I1 or I2 anymore. I2, we did not even touch it yet. But I1 goes this way, so you have to go this way. Now we have at I3, and as you can see, since it's going from this side of the resistor to this side, from the positive to the negative, that's another potential drop. Another potential drop, V equals IR, and this potential drop is equal to 10 I3, or I3 times 10. I, V, I, R, and R is equal to 10. Okay, now let's go here. What do we have here? Um, let's see. Here we go on a potential change from the positive to the negative. If you go from the positive to the negative, it's negative. And it's a potential already ready for us, which is 2. So minus 2 here. Now keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going across the same loop. You meet the point where you started at. Once you do that, you just put equals to 0. Okay? Now let's um, simplify this equation, and I'm going to call this equation number 2. Uh, let's try to find um, equation number 3, because we need three equations for three different unknown currents. So I'm going to start, I'm going to pick a point, and I would like to start here at this point. I'm going to call it B. And look, I chose already to go clockwise. So if I start with B, I'm going to go this way, this way, this way, this way. Okay? Here's my point B. I'm going to go applying the loop rule for Kirchhoff's rules. I'm going to go here. Look, now I go from negative to positive. All the potential difference across this loop must add up to zero. This one is the first one that I meet. And from negative to positive, this means that I gain potential. So I'm going to say it's plus 2 volts. Now go here. Look at this point here. There's a potential change here. Now, is it a drop or a gain? I go from the negative to the positive, so that's a gain. So I'm going to put it plus uh, I3 times what? The 10. Because V equals IR, remember. I'm going to put it here. V equals IR. That's the potential we're looking for, always. So now I go... Now at the junction I go, now I'm involving I2 in the process. So look here, I'm going from negative potential to the positive potential. So I'm gaining, I'm gaining what? 10 I2. So I'm going to plus, let's say plus 10 I2. Now I'm going to go here. I hit this uh, battery. I go through it from the positive to the negative. So that's a voltage drop. Since it's a voltage drop from the positive to the negative, it's negative 15. And once I meet my point, starting point again, B, it's actually, I'm going to put make it equal to zero here. Okay, let's simplify the equation. Okay, so how do we solve these three equations? Let me write them down again here, equation number three. Here, the physics part is done. What remains is just a lot of algebra and a lot of math. So let's look at these three equations, see how we can solve them. Three equations with three unknowns. There's many ways to solve them, but it's a good idea to try to find the best way and the easiest way if I write this equation in terms of I1. So I'm going to say this equation is e in terms of I1 is equal to I3 minus I2. Okay, now let's simplify this equation. So 8 comes down minus 5 I3 minus 5 times minus 2 is plus 5 I2 minus 10 I3 is equal to 0. Okay, so now more simplification. 8 equal to 0. I'm going to call this equation number 4. Let's say if I multiply this equation by minus 2, not my, by, by plus 2, minus 2. So this becomes minus 2 times 8 is minus 16. Now, plus 30 I3 
minus 10i2, that should be equal to 0. Now, grab this equation and put it under this one. So if you add these two equations, the i2 term will uh, cancel each other. So I'm going to put here my and add those both two together. Then 40i3 is equal to 29, minus or minus cancels, of course, here. Then i3 is equal to 29 over 40 amps. We got it to be positive. This means that the direction for i3, which is this direction going down in this section, is correct. Now let's find i2. Take this and plug it here. So what do we have? We have minus 13 plus 10 i3, which is times 29, divided by 40, plus 10 i2 is equal to 0. Now minus 13, uh, 40 with 10 becomes only 4. Uh, plus 29 over 4, plus 10 i2 is equal to 0. Minus 13 plus 7.25 is equal to minus 5.75, plus 10 i2 is equal to 0. Take the 10 i2 to the other side, so minus 5.75 is equal to minus 10 i2, minus or minus cancels. So i2 is equal to 5.75 divided by 10 amps. Again, it is positive, which includes that the direction we suggested for i2 is correct, which is going this way, this way, and so on. Now we need to find I1. Or I1 is equal to I3 minus I2. I'm going to go here. I1 is equal to I3 minus I2. I3 is equal to 29 over 40 minus 5.75 over 10. We get the answer to be... 0.155 amps. Again, it is positive, so our suggestion to begin with for the direction of I1 is correct. And that is it. You find, you were able to find I1, I2, and I3, all the values of the currents in that circuit. And that's it for the day. Thank you very much. I hope this helps.